What is up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's your girl JD here back with another video. So I just have one question. To be honest, it's not directed at you guys. Mm -mm. Mr. Tyler Perry, what the heck was this film that you released over on Netflix called Mia Culpa? Genuinely, I really would like to know what the goal was behind this film because maybe it would help me to understand where this was being taken, like what the overarching idea was. Just maybe. Y'all let me know if y'all was just as confused as I was. If y'all have watched this film already, y'all let me know. But it's over on Netflix. It just got released maybe a couple days ago at this point. Probably even maybe a week at the most. I'm sure you probably heard about the little bit of drama going on with Kelly Rowland because she was like the main star in this film. But Kelly Rowland, she was on a couple of shows and she's trying to talk about Mia Culpa and these radio hosts keep asking her about Beyonce and how she's putting out country music and how Kelly feels about the country music. And it's just kind of like, she's not here to talk about her friend. Not right now. If she was at Beyonce's concert being actively interviewed, about Beyonce, then that would make sense. But the fact that you're asking Kelly Rowland to come onto your show, I would think you would take the time to come up with specific questions about what's going on with Kelly Rowland, not Beyonce. Obviously this has been happening to Kelly for years. This is no new thing, but at the same time, I really do feel bad for her because it's just kind of like this woman is trying to live her life. She's trying to continue to do projects, obviously continue to put out music. She's acting and y'all still here talking about Beyonce. Like Kelly is not attached at the hip to Beyonce, but apparently she did walk off of one of the shows and it had something to do apparently with the dressing room being too small and they didn't want to give her a decent sized dressing room. That's just what I heard. But she did walk out because they was playing with her and she wasn't having it and I don't blame her okay because Kelly deserves the best let's not play anyways so we're here to talk about Mia Culpa that got released actually now that I see it it's the 23rd yeah that was four days ago it's the 27th that I'm filming this but whenever I do decide to actually post it that's when y'all see it <laughs> But also I'm in the process of taking these twists out my head because I believe in multitasking. So we're gonna talk about Mia Culpa, but I'm gonna be taking these twists out because I need to wash my hair today. So thank you for your patience. Really quickly, I just wanna read what I see here in terms of the write-up for the film. And then I'm gonna go into my thoughts because I kind of already shared some thoughts of confusion at the beginning of this video, but we're gonna go into a little bit more detail as to why there was confusion in the first place. So let's read this right up really quickly okay it says a criminal defense attorney takes on the case of a seductive artist accused of murdering his girlfriend but when burning desire takes hold things get hot and dangerous <laughs> y'all if that don't sound like some weird like novel that you know a guy would probably write in the hopes of trying to garner like a female fan base so that he could just keep selling books and not have to put that much effort into actually writing something decent that's exactly what that sounds like to me but it was the seductive artist for me I'm not gonna lie it was the seductive artist I was like who wrote this <laughs> really quickly I do want to mention the cast so like I said already Kelly Rowland she's the star she's playing the main character Mia she's the defense attorney and then we have the seductive artist I guess Zaire basically he's played by Travante Rhodes and then we have Mia Culpa's husband Cal who's played by Sean Sager and then I think this is his brother his actual brother in real life they played brothers in the show as well but Nick Sager is also on there he plays Cal's brother and then we have Shannon Thornton who I just realized she was on P Valley. I've never actually done a actual video on P Valley, but y'all let me know. <laughs> it is a very wild story, but I think they're about three or four seasons in at this point. I don't know. Y'all let me know if y'all want me to do a video on that TV show, but it is crazy. And she is gorgeous. Oh my God, her and Kelly, oh, just, oh. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. Like, <laughs> they are so beautiful. Oh my gosh. Then we have Ron Rico Lee, who plays basically the detective that Mia Culpa uses to, it seems, get information on her husband. 
Cal, who she believes is cheating on her with a woman that he refers to as just a friend. So I'm just gonna go through the storyline really quickly so we can then discuss my thoughts. And then I'm just gonna open up the floor for you guys to discuss in the comments with me, okay? Because I'd really like to know what y'all think about this. We open up to Mia Culpa and her husband Cal, they're sitting in a therapy session. I guess Mia had basically used her detective friend to run some type of, you know, recon, I guess is what you might be able to call it. But she basically tries to spy on this husband of hers to see if he's actually cheating on her. It seems as though that might not be the case, but we're gonna get into that a little bit later. She feels as though this man is cheating because she actually found him at a cafe or some type of restaurant restaurant holding hands with this woman and he's just like no she was just having a tough time I was just trying to help her out make her feel better but you know not in a sexual way <laughs> I don't know how to describe it but either way she feels like after seeing that basically that they're cheating and I was like oh okay then but after that they go to a party for I think it was um, his mother's birthday and she according to the story has cancer why is my hair so matted oh my gosh like it, it is time to wash it is dry it's his mother's birthday and he buys her a gift you could tell that this was not discussed with Mia she's just looking at him like what, what is this? So we find out the reason why there's so much tension in terms of financials between them is because Cal lost his job as an anesthesiologist. I had to say that a couple of times. I took out the other takes because <laughs> I was like, anesthesiologist. <laughs> So he was obviously making some pretty good money. She's a lawyer. They were both making really good money until he decided to show up to his job intoxicated and he lost it. But the thing is though, if you get fired for a reason like that in the medical field, you are most definitely never getting a job in the medical field ever again. So I don't know what he would have done in terms of, you know, money, <laughs> in terms of getting a job. It's like, what do you do after that? Because, you know, you did all the studying for this particular position and now you can't even go back to that position just at a different hospital because they're gonna find out that you got fired because you were intoxicated on the job. It's really rough right now in their marriage. Clearly finances have a big part to play. And on top of that, it looks as though because of that, Mia has to take on a lot more jobs and she's hardly ever Ever home and you could see that it's definitely oh it's wearing away at their marriage that's all I'm going to say so this is where we get introduced to the seductive artist Zaire so Zaire is being accused of killing his girlfriend like I said in the write-up and apparently this was some type of gruesome murder according to Mia there was skull pieces some pieces of her skull in his paintings I'm trying to figure out how that happens when we find out what we find out at the very end obviously over time Zaire kind of convinces Mia to start coming to his little loft apartment to talk about the case and she is trying to get him to tell him everything so that they don't have no surprises in court but the thing is they never actually go to court <laughs> This entire movie, she's never actively defending him in a lawyer case. You know what I mean? Like it's, <laughs> how do I describe this? I'm, I don't think I'm saying this well. But we never actually see her be a lawyer lawyer. We just see her looking through evidence files and talking to Zaire and then eventually messing around with him. We're gonna get into that. So Zaire, he clearly is feeling Mia. But what gets me though is the lack of chemistry. <laughs> if I'm going to be real, I was not feeling the chemistry between Mia and Zaire. Eventually, after she came to his apartment one time and he had another woman there, eventually, like, it started to seem like maybe she might have been. It was getting kind of hot and heavy. But, um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's very interesting. I just didn't feel it at the beginning. I was like, I don't really feel the attraction, but okay. Personally, I think the guy is okay looking. I know a lot of people are just like, oh my god, he's gorgeous. And I'm just like, I mean, he just squints from time to time. And you just think like, oh my god. He's so attractive. You know what I mean? Like the entire movie, this is Zaire. Like, <laughs> I just can't. Eventually things started to get very hot and heavy, but I think over time he was trying to like, obviously get in her pants to begin with because he started doing things like, oh, you do all the things that you're supposed to do. Like, do you never break the rules? Like, you know, like the typical bad boy 
stereotype. He just lives up to it all the way. They try to make him out to be this character that has so many layers because he's an artist. And I'm just like, let's be real. It's, he's a pretty straightforward character. We already know who he is. He would do little things here and there. One time he took her to this, like, I guess it was a part of his apartment building, but some type of underground sex dungeon or something like that where everyone's just messing around with each other. And I'm just like, what is going on? So he just abandons her. She doesn't even know where he went. And then the next night, that's when he has this other woman in the apartment. And I'm just like, um, okay. So obviously she is very much so, in this moment anyway, very much so weak. And this comes especially after, again, her detective friend finds out that her husband Cal was taking this woman that he claims was just a friend to a hotel room, but there was no context. So she just saw that as, oh my God, he really is cheating on me. But he wasn't. He was actually, we find out after Mia decides to mess around with this Zaire guy. She finds out that they were just moving their mom to a new location so that they would be closer to the hospital because she wasn't feeling too well, apparently. But what's strange though to me is that we find out that somehow Cal's brother is connected to Zaire. I'm trying to figure out how the heck this brother would even know that Mia was messing around with this Zaire guy. Literally the next day, they have Cal and Mia come in and it's just like, well, Mia, why don't you tell him what happened? Why don't you tell him that you was fooling around with this guy? And it's just weird. They never actually explain how how Ray even knows that Mia is messing around with this guy because at the surface you already know that she's going to Zaire's apartment because she's his lawyer but how do you know that they actually was having sex you know what I'm saying like it only happened once in the movie but it's just kind of like how, how did you know that so they never actually exposed that source so I was very confused I was like is Zaire in on it like was he trying to trap Mia I I don't know what was going on. Anyway, I had so many questions. But anyways, so Cal, he's feeling a ways, obviously. But Ray just definitely gave me the heebie-jeebies from the beginning, I'm not gonna lie. He made me kind of uncomfortable. Like, he just gave off this, like, douchey vibe. But eventually, Mia decides to not be Zaire's lawyer because she found out from another person, another woman, that sells Zaire's art. She had basically explained to Mia, because Mia was interviewing her, to get some type of character reference about Zaire. And she was interviewing this woman and this woman goes into detail about how Zaire wooed her and then eventually slept with her. And she describes the exact same thing that happened to Mia. He would sit down, let her paint, tell her to paint how she feels, all that. And then eventually he ends up just doing little things here and there to kind of get you in bed, pretty much. And then after you wake up after that night of hot and heavy sex, you wake up and you look at the ceiling and see a picture of you that he painted. So yeah. Eventually, Mia figures all this out. She goes back to the apartment. She starts ripping all of these layers of all these women that he painted. And I was like, okay, well, I mean, clearly he was just sleeping with a bunch of women. She eventually uncovers the layer of the woman, the girlfriend that we mentioned in the beginning that he killed, supposedly. I was like, I mean, okay, this doesn't really confirm anything. I was really trying to figure out how does a painting confirm, like the fact that he just wrote on the painting, like I'll kill you or something like that. I can't remember the, what exactly he said, but that's all that he did. You know, so I was just kind of like, how is this evidence? Like, what? Don't get me wrong, it would make people question you a lot more. But at the same time, in terms of presenting it in court as like actual evidence, it's not really that strong of a case. So I couldn't really understand why Mia was freaking out. But at the same time, I think it was because she liked him. It was like, now I know that you have some type of game running that you run on all these other women and I'm, I'm not unique. You know, you're doing the same thing to other women. It was like, what was the hastiness of saying that he was guilty? Like, I was very confused by that situation. After this, Mia decides to just go to the Dominican Republic to, I guess, breathe a little bit because she just needed a break. Somehow, this ends up being the exact same hotel that we find Zaire's ex-girlfriend that they claimed had died and that he killed and murdered. Somehow she's alive and she's just working as a maid at the exact same hotel that Mia goes to? Really? I, it, 
It's just too much of a coincidence. Like the writing, the writing, like she didn't have to do that much detective work to actually uncover, oh, this girlfriend is actually alive. Oh, Zaire is innocent. Oh, he didn't actually murder her. Why is she here? So eventually she goes to the police, but they didn't do much. But she decides to call Cal's brother, Ray, and pretty much tell him that she found this girl. The thing is though, right? We saw in the beginning that she'd made this whole video, this ex-girlfriend that's supposed to be dead, but isn't. She made this whole video saying how she was scared he was gonna come and kill her she was kind of fearing for her life in this video so I'm like okay well what is all this about like who's hiding you how were you able to go to the Dominican Republic and set up a new life like I'm, I'm trying to figure that out. Like who was she connected to? So we find out obviously Ray had some evil intentions about this whole situation. And after Mia comes back to Ray's house, because obviously Mia's already on edge, the fact that Ray's being nice to her, because like I said, he gave off douchey vibes. And he's just like, yeah, come home. And Mia's just like, well, what about your mom? Cause your mom clearly doesn't like me. She told me to get out. Like when they found out that she was cheating on Cal with this artist, like she, clearly does not really care for Mia like that. And Ray's just like, yeah, I'll talk to my mom. She'll be fine, okay? It's okay, just come back to the house. And I'm just like, Mia, I mean, why would you just come back to the house? Like, you don't find that strange? Anyways, Mia uncovers that obviously Ray has some connection to Zaire because he has one of Zaire's paintings that happens to be a painting of his wife. Ray's wife. This is Mia's friend now, Charlize. And Mia's just like, why the heck do you have this? Why, why was Charlize even painted? And she makes the brain connection like, oh, more than likely Charlize was also sleeping with this man. So Ray clears that up. He's just like, yeah, you know, y'all are just dumb women because y'all all got caught up in the same con artist and y'all both slept with the same man, which is interesting. I'm like, I, I don't, Okay, I don't even understand how Charlize got even connected to Zaire in the first place. Like, when did this happen? Again, it's just so much that I was like, wait, huh? So Mia, she's uncovering all of this and they exposed this whole weird plot that Ray and his mom had going on. But I was kind of confused as to what the reason was. Like, what did they have to gain from doing that? Like they catch their wives cheating. I'm trying to figure out what was the overall goal here. Mia is trying to leave and then Ray tells Charlize to stab Mia, but Charlize just decides to turn around and try to stab Ray, but he ends up stabbing Charlize. And then Mia is just trying to run out the house. I think she does get to the car, but then Ray and Cal's mother, who we find out didn't even have cancer, they were just using that as a way to boost votes. <laughs> I think he was running for office or something, some position. That never gets talked about or clarified either. But Mia's running out the house. She's trying to drive away. Cal Cal and Ray's mother jumps on the hood of the car. Mia just decides to run the truck into this dang tree. And I'm trying to figure out if this woman is dead. Wait, we, we don't know. At the end, she is nowhere to be found. Either way, she calls Cal. Cal comes to get her. And then we find out Cal is a part of this whole situation. But I'm like, okay, what is the reason though? I'm really trying to figure it out. What was the overall goal? Usually if you are the villains of the story, there is still an overall goal as to why you're doing what you're doing. <laughs> Like the characters have to have a why. They have to have a reason for their existence. What is the reason, Tyler? Because Mia uncovers all of this, she unbuckles Cal's seatbelt. And I'm just like, Cal, how in this moment did you not recognize what she was trying to do? You know what I'm saying? Like, anyways, he's just like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And then she sees this massive semi truck coming down the street on the other side. And she decides to move the car into the other lane with the semi truck. And somehow the semi truck magically hits this car at just the right angle for Cal to basically get propelled through the windshield and pretty much hit the pavement and die on impact. So Mia is somehow okay. She just deals with the impact of an airbag. And the police end up going to Ray's house. Obviously they find Charlie stabbed to death more than likely. But we don't see any of this. We only see Ray getting arrested. We don't know if the mother is dead, none of that. But then it just pretty much cuts from that scene to the very end. We see that Zaire had been found innocent because of all this evidence. I guess Mia had this track phone or something that couldn't really be detected. I don't know what it was. He messages Mia, he's just like, thank you, we should meet up, all that. 
but Mia just throws the phone away and walks off and then there's a black screen. And I'm just scratching my head. The ending was so rushed. Actually, in fact, the whole movie was rushed. It did not even need to get put out because there were so many questions that weren't answered. It would have been better off as a TV show, I feel. Because then each episode, you could see certain things get uncovered and certain questions could be answered. Obviously, when it comes to these crime, drama, mystery type of films, I think you really have to do your best to make Make things make sense but obviously do it in a very entertaining way so you have your work cut out for you but in this movie I just feel like there was so many things that did not logically make sense like I mentioned the girl her skull fragments apparently were in the painting I'm just like did her DNA match like how did y'all know those were her skull fragments it did not make sense because we end up finding out later on that she wasn't even dead they never killed her. How do you find her skull fragments in the painting? <laughs> you know, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. And I'm trying to figure out what Mia is going to do now because her husband's dead and now she's walking away all mysterious. And I'm just like, so what happens now? Like, it definitely reminded me in terms of like, you know, the hot and heavy scenes and all that. It definitely reminded me of The Marriage Counselor. If y'all remember that movie that Tyler did, um, actually not The Marriage Counselor. That was the name of the play. He ended up adapting that play into a film, Temptation. That's it. Temptation was the name of the movie. It reminded me of Temptation. I don't know if y'all remember that, but Journey, Journey Smollett was in that. And I thought that movie definitely, it definitely had that allure to it. And you could really feel that chemistry and hot and heaviness between them. But when it came to this film, it just felt again so rushed that I couldn't really feel that build up and that, you know, like longing, right? I just really couldn't feel that. With Temptation, you could definitely tell like this was a temptation, okay? But in this movie, it just, it did not feel like he really took the time. Okay, I, I'm just going to be honest. The buildup was not there. It just was like, here we go, here we go. You know, this is a sex scene and then this is this. And they, like, it just, just didn't feel that dramatic. You know, like it did not have the drama that it needed in my opinion. But it was directed and written by Tyler Perry. I researched it. And I'm just like, Tyler, you are going to need someone in that writer's room with you. You need to create a writer's room and put writers in it along with yourself because you can't just be writing all these films by your dang self, okay? This is another prime example as to why. <laughs> It's just, it's not, it's not cutting it anymore. I think he has a deal with Netflix now to just keep pumping out films because all of his latest films have been on Netflix. But I'm just like, yeah, it's just, it's something that really needs to happen. I think he really needs to have more writers, more perspectives, more people to add in and create a storyline that actually makes sense and isn't boring and predictable because even though in this film there were some areas where i was like oh that was a little bit of a surprise it wasn't really that much of a gasp like shocked moment because it just didn't really feel like the build-up was there so y'all let me know how y'all feel about this film i was highly disappointed but again as soon as i heard tyler perry's name on this movie i was like i can't really be all that disappointed <laughs> i kind of already know what to expect and he didn't disappoint in terms of giving me what i expected so I can say that. But y'all let me know your thoughts on this one down in the comments. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.